So let me go ahead and go into the GA component of it and I will give you an explanation of that. Um, let me go ahead and go into a very brief explanation of genetic algorithms for those of you that do not know what is involved. Um, GA sort of takes the idea of natural selection and evolution um, with organisms and lets you come up with an optimal solution. GA does not give you a the the 100% best solution. It does give you an optimal solution. So what we do is we generate these layouts um, and we can then take these layouts and mutate two of these layouts together. Um, we can toss out layouts. We can take the best layouts um, using something called elitism. Um, we can then uh, basically look at the map and come up with something called a fitness score, which the fitness score is our definition of how well the layout did in that particular generation. Um, the higher the score, obviously the better that it did. So using this process, it does take a long time for things like the GA2, you know, crunch information. Um, but in the end, we have found out that using GA for something like this with a finite solution, that we can actually, we, we actually have found a purpose to use GA in game development. Um, so the first thing that I will do, let me go back and I'll select a level. I'll go ahead and select the main level. And we will, I'll show you exactly what it looks like whenever we uh, play the game. Or when we let the computer play the game. So th these options right here are just to change the amount of elitism percentage, the, uh, the mutation percentage, the number of layouts per generation. If you know anything about GA, these are all general GA terms. Um, this is a very basic GA. Um, you can definitely get way more advanced than we did. You can also get a little bit more basic than what we did too, but, um, it, it worked, the, what we came up with worked real well. So you can see that the GA starts off fairly basic. Um, and we, we have it speeding up the process because you don't want to sit here and wait. I mean, you saw how long it took us to play the level, um, by itself. And you don't want to sit here and wait, you know, to play the level at that speed. So running it at this speed does have a few drawbacks. Um, you have it, playing it at this speed and playing it at a normal speed may not always get you the, the answer that you want it to give you. So we started off very quickly. Um, it's going 10 times the normal speed right now. And if it finds an optimal winning solution, which we have defined that as winning the game, with the full amount of base health left. Once it has done that, we can then, we, we then set the speed back. And we, we slowly start drawing the speed back until it can win at the speed of one, which is the normal gameplay speed, to make sure that it can actually win the game with no outside, you know, without no outside interference due to uh, increasing the, the delta time. So you can see right now, the game will lose several times. Um, it, and what it's doing is it's coming up with different layouts. And we, we have set, the, we have set the, the settings to have 45 layouts per generation. So it's going to run through this thing 45 times to get one generation. Okay? A generation is what gets carried over. It's what gets... It contains all the information about the 45 layouts. It will then get evolved. It will get mutated. Um, we'll perform elitism on it. We'll perform crossover. Um, all these different uh, heuristics to co start coming up with different solutions. Um, and what we'll see is as we go to the very end and we let this thing crunch for possibly, you know, uh, two or three days, that we'll come up with a better solution. The game will progressively get better as it goes. So we'll kind of zoom in a little close here. You can see that the computer will start placing towers. Um, it pre-selects towers and then it waits till it has the enough money to build that tower that it wanted to build. Through this GA, we had actually learned um, we had actually learned something pretty cool. We had we had found out that 
you can use genetic algorithms to balance games. Um, and if we let this run all the way to the very end, and I'll show you a winning solution, um, we can then see what towers have been used the most. Is one tower more powerful than another tower? Are some towers not being used at all because they're too weak? Um, and most importantly, is the game even beatable? Um, so it, it sort of provides an unbiased beta tester opinion for your game. And we had actually, it also kind of helped test our game levels a little bit too. Make sure that we found lots of random crashes whenever we were initially developing the game and a lot of, you know, algorithms that we had to adjust just because we would let the GA run so long and we weren't getting the results that we expected. So it turned out to be, it turned out to be a major help. And I'll go ahead. Basically, it's just going to keep running through this. And like I said, the G, this GA, I think, too, when we got our winning solution for this, it had run for a day and a half to two days before we ended up getting a winning solution. Um, we had actually done testing on this for a couple of weeks before we even, you know, managed to, to make the level uh, winnable. We were not able to get the level to win. Um, we had found out that we were making the mobs too powerful and the guns not powerful enough. And that was sort of the goal of the GA to begin with. So let me go ahead and go back to the main menu. Go ahead and stop this. And I will go ahead and play the winning solution. Um, these are all sorts of different winning solutions. I guess I'll take the latest one. And what this will show you... So this is a winning solution that it came up with. And like I said, we defined the 100% winning solution as being able to beat the entire game without losing any base health at all. Because that was the optimal win. So we'll kind of just watch it for a second. But you'll see the computer place the towers in different areas. Whenever the GA had actually arrived at this winning solution, it saves off a binary file. Um, of the um, of the GA at that point, and so we basically play back the very last generation. So you can see it places the nuke tower as early as possible because it realizes it does a lot more damage. We'll see our big explosion. And while this is going on, I'll go ahead and explain. You can uh, go to the website that I'll provide um, the link to if you're watching this on YouTube. And you will see that the, all the sources and the installer is available. Um, the game still has a few bugs in it in a couple of places. Um, but, you know, it, it's definitely playable. So you can come in and create your own games and have just a, a fun little game. Um, the sources are available. If you want to see how we did what we did, you are more than welcome to download the source. So it's on wave 11 of 15 right now. Got a lot going on. Here comes another nuke, which happens every minute. So you can see so far we're, we're starting to get kind of a good separation of, of weapons. Um, we have, you know, three artilleries, three lasers. Actually, we have five artilleries, three lasers, three gun towers, the single nuke. We have one chrono so far. Um, but as it gets going further, you'll see more pop up. Um, one thing that we had also noticed, too, and this kind of explains, so we just had our first lightning tower pop up. So this kind of provides a good example that maybe the lightning tower doesn't have enough power to be considered a great, you know, a great tower, a great weapon to use against the enemies. There's more gun towers, more everything. So as far as everything goes, you know, everything except the lightning tower is pretty much being used to an optimal point. We only have one chrono, which it placed at the very end. We got a couple of lightning towers up now.
So we're on last wave is coming out. So you can see that sometimes the enemies actually do get very close to the end over here, uh, but they still manage to get blown up. All the enemies are out. We can see we got a nice, we got a nice um, diversity of towers that are out. And one thing that's that's very interesting to know is we actually had provided a couple of heuristics. Um, towers can be placed anywhere on the grid, which the grid is about from right here where my mouse is, and it goes all the way to about right here where this my other mouse is. Um, but we had actually made it where the GA would not place a tower where it could not hit the path. So there is a small heuristic there that kind of helps speed up the entire process. But you can you can really see that they're, they place towers a lot around these areas that can hit the path for the longest period of time. But a lot of these straighter areas right here, there's very few towers that surround it. But you can see we have a nice little grouping of towers right here, a nice grouping of towers up here because the path is more, um, there's more path within that amount of space. Here comes another nuke. Hopefully this uh, won't make a liar out of me and it will actually defeat everything. These are our last amount of mobs coming up right here. They're getting pretty close, but they should all die. Getting very close. Let's see if it does it. Yeah, it's gonna do it. You can see they, they got pretty close, but look at that. We have a winning layout now. Um, so this had won the layout. This was all through the genetic algorithms, um, and it actually shows us several things about the map. If you saw whenever we were there, um, you know we had several towers um, of all different types that ended up popping up. So we felt that for this particular level, our goal for this level was just to have a nice diverse set of towers everywhere. Um, the only thing that didn't pop up so much was the Chrono Tower, the one that slows everything down. So kind of makes you wonder, did we make all the weapons too powerful where slowing down the enemies wasn't, you know, necessary? Um, you know, it, it, you, you still have to define what your goal is for a level, but as you can see, we were able to find out a lot about the level through a completely unbiased um, demonstration. Um, usually games are balance through the, um, you know, play testing over and over and over again. Um, you know, taking the opinions of beta testers and other developers and other people you show the game to to try and, you know, give you their opinions over, oh, I think this is too hard or it's not hard enough or it's, um, you know, th these enemies are too powerful or my weapons are too weak. You know, we can actually use the computer to define that for us. So it, it helps get rid of a lot of biased um, opinions.